A few weeks ago, we dived into the wonderful world of renting a condominium in the Philippines. Today, we will be focusing our attention on renting a house by exploring what you need to know. The neighborhood. The neighborhood is without a doubt one of the most important factors of selecting where you live. Similar to other countries, the Philippines has more expensive areas and others that are more cost effective. There are a few online sources with information on certain neighborhoods neighborhoods which I've added to the description below. But the biggest areas for most expats are the safety and the noise. You may also wish to consider other categories such as the accessibility to the hospitals, the shops, etc. The price. Houses tend to be slightly cheaper than condominiums based on a square foot calculation. However, most houses are much larger than condominiums and therefore the overall price can sometimes be higher than a condo even if the square foot price is lower. But this is not always the case. The age of the building and the location are some factors that can impact the overall price per square foot. Also, there is a limitation on how much landlords can increase the rent. This will depend on the total price of your accommodation. For example, if a tenant's rental price is less than 5,000 pesos, the landlord can only increase the rent by 2% once a year. The current maximum percentage increase is 11%, but this again depends on the cost of the property. The deposit. The amount of a deposit can change depending on the agreement that you make with the landlord. Typically in the Philippines, the secure deposit is one month advance rental and two months deposit. Therefore, if your house has a rental price of 20,000 pesos, the total amount needed will be 60,000 pesos. Under the Rent Control Act 9653 Section 7, Landlords cannot request more than this. It's recommended to use a service such as WISE when you're paying your deposit. This link is also in the description. WISE will save you a great deal of cash in transfer fees. It's often recommended to pay electronically, but if you choose to pay in cash, it's essential to obtain a written receipt. I sometimes go as far as taking a video when I move in and pay the deposit, and even though this can seem over the top, it does avoid any future disagreements. The contract. The great thing about renting in the Philippines is that there are certain laws to protect you as a tenant despite whether you are a foreigner or a Filipino. Any damage needs to be acknowledged by both parties and physical documentation of this damage needs to be completed. Some landlords can become sneaky and add in additional fees such as cleaning fees. So it's best to determine if there are any exit fees before you sign the contract. It's recommended, like myself, to take a video of everything. A video can be very valuable in the future, but the contract is a legally binding agreement in the Philippines, so it's best to take your time at this stage. The Wi-Fi. Some areas do have better signaling strength than others, but the good news is, when you are looking to rent a house in the Philippines, there are coverage checkers online. You can input your location and type of connection that you are looking for, whether that be 5G or fiber internet, and the websites will be able to tell you how strong or weak the connection is in that area. Before moving in, however, I would also take a moment to walk around the neighborhood and your new house and test the internet on your phone. The natural disasters. The Philippines is one of the leading countries that are prone to natural disasters. For example, if you are staying in Davao, you may notice an earthquake or two during your stay. Most of the time, the natural disasters are minimal and nothing to worry about. But if you are planning to live in an older house, then a strong natural disaster can damage the property. A friend of mine experienced this when a crack developed in the kitchen of his house due to an earthquake. However, the landlord claimed that the crack was not due to an earthquake and there was a disagreement. It is likely that the landlord did not have insurance that covers natural disasters. And even though this situation is rare, it's always wise to consider the law. 
The Republic Act 9653 and the Civil Code are well-documented laws that aim to protect both the landlord and the tenant. On the rare occasion that landlords or renters violate any provisions of the rental law, they could face financial penalties or in serious cases imprisonment. But please do not worry as this tends to be more serious incidents. The return of the deposit. So the day has come when you have decided to move to a new location and you wish your deposit to be returned. Most landlords will refund your deposit back into your original account, but they may ask you for a Philippines bank account if there is a fee. If you are a member of WISE, which was previously known as TransferWISE, you will be able to accept Filipino pesos effortlessly. The landlord can keep some or all of the deposit for any outstanding bills or damage to the property. Therefore, it's always important to keep a receipt of every payment made to your utility providers. If you don't reach an agreement, you can seek assistance from a barangay chairman who has the authority to protect both landlords and tenants. 